All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the Sound Test Room US. Uh, so we're gonna have a look at Pro MIDI right now. The setup just came out yesterday, maybe the day before, I believe, and um, I, I just received it late, late last night and played with it for a few hours before bed. And uh, yeah, I, I found it to be pretty cool here. It's pretty intuitive, um, which is nice because there's no no online documentation for it, no demo videos from the developer, no uh, no online manual. Um, we go into our settings here. We see there's an online help. Takes you to the website. Uh, where there's no mention of the app anywhere. So you're kind of left to fend for yourself. So it's pretty nice though that it's, it is very intuitive. And if you just kind of play around with it, you might be able to, to figure out what you want to do. But in any case, uh, we have our settings here. This is also available to us inside of our projects, but I'll go over this quickly. Uh, general, this is where we can turn on the background mode so that this can run while we play with our synths, you know, um, by double tapping to them there or whatever. Uh, the disable the sleep mode for the iPad is pretty nice. Uh, draw notes on the clip. This is cool. Um, so we'll leave that on... I'll show you that. And then the full screen just, I think, just removes the little red audio bus bar. Or, you know, this doesn't have audio bus support, but, um, you know, if you were using audio bus with this, you know, uh, it would cover that up for you there, I believe, is all this does. The sync settings here, uh, this is where we can set this app itself to send and receive clock, as well as latency compensation, which is pretty cool. And uh, the connections here, this is where we can do, um, uh, set this, you know, for Thumb Jam here, which is running in the background, to... Uh, to receive and then enable the connection to begin with there. Same thing for sending in the in our output. And yeah, and the online help just takes you to the, the developer's website. So the plus sign here, uh, this is you know where we can add in our new projects. Uh, the little pencil is for deleting them there when we decide we're done with them. But let's uh, tap on it and open it on up here. And this is our, our main clip launching, you know, scene launching little interface here. Uh, the three three lines up top here, that's going, going to uh, take you back to your, your main menu. We can hit the plus sign here and add clips and rows. So uh, just by default, it's going to put it into 1-1, one, one, but otherwise you can just highlight wherever you want to add a new clip. Um, the rows over here on the right, uh, you got 1 through 9 right away by adding a new one. We can now scroll to a tenth one. Very cool there. We can uh, trash that. I don't think you can trash the... Uh, the, the rows that you create. But yeah, so now this is, uh, you know, we can launch our clips by pressing on them right there, as well as our, you know, um, scenes over here on the right-hand side so that they all, all synchronize together. And, uh, you know, flip back and forth between that way, create a little verse chorus kind of action going on or something. So yeah, so let's, uh, let's just trash that one real quick. And um, so we have, we're using Thumb Jam today, so we've got a, a couple of instruments loaded up for us. Um, by default, it's, you know, one through four is visible to us here. These little grayed out boxes give us, you know, five through eight and the rest of our, our channels there for us. Uh, by default, they are mapped, you know, this is channel one, this is channel two, etc. But we can hit the little carrot down here uh, for each track and set the routing this way. So if we want to change the channel and send this, you know, on... on eight or something, you know, there you go. Um, we can also, this just basically activates the clips for us. Um, you know, before we touch on any of this stuff, let's, let's double tap on a, on a clip here and create a little data. So first things first, uh, we have a little keyboard here and this is where we can control whatever app, you know, we're using uh, right from inside of the app, which is very, very cool. And we can just hit record and hit play to, to get it going. And there we go, we got a little clip going on. We can select it all right there and delete what we don't like. So they're very nice, there's a multi-select, which is very cool. So yeah, so pretty cool that you can just use the keyboard and get this going on and um, just you know create a little performance, edit it down that way. Alternatively, we can uh, just start tapping on notes and um, you know, doing things this way. So, you know, there it is. Exciting stuff there, <laughs> so. Okay, so uh, now that we've created some notes that we want to, uh, to adjust, we can uh, do, a, do a few things with them now. So let's get rid of our keyboard real quick. And, um, you know, first things first, uh, we have a little pinch to zoom, and this is where we can 
kind of create little finer details like this, uh, you know, um, finer note entry. And alternatively, when you zoom out, you know, you can uh, set them in that way. Um, we can uh, run this in a loop mode, which is very nice. And that's what these, uh, these little white carrots up on top. Alternatively, this is where we can kind of set the play range for like a one shot sort of a MIDI clip. So we can see when we hit play there, it starts from three and it's going to end wherever this ends. It shouldn't have looped like that, but it's probably just because I moved the, the thing. So there we go. Uh, we can see it just sort of stopped there for us. And alternatively, we have a loop mode. So in our little tools right there, we can enable the loop. And now this way, it's just going to create the, the two bar loop or whatever we like. And then we can move this around. You know, so if you had a, a four bar loop and we would just want to swap back and forth between two parts, we could do that, you know, in a live kind of kind of setting. So yeah, and then uh, once we, let's, uh, well, let's show you this real quick. So we have um, the little note where we can add in our, our custom scales if we like, as well as all sorts of, of other ones. There's a, uh, you know, modal, modal tuning there, jazz, European, all sorts of stuff. And uh, unfortunately, there's no way to set the root that I can see. So um, this is all gonna be in C. So this is going to be a C minor, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it looks like you have to go into custom if you want to change your key to basically anything, you know, but C. So say we just want our, you know, our sharps. You could do that, create a little pentatonic scale going on there. And yeah, and so let's kind of scroll down here a bit and just get a little pattern going on here. We'll just get a little random with it. So very cool. We can uh, use our selection tool, grab them all right now, and then here on the right, we can transpose them, move them around, move them a little later, pinch to zoom, and they'll still say selected for us. So we can move them down to whatever... Uh, we want to get a little low. We can adjust their note length all at the same time, which is very cool. We can undo what we just did. I'm not sure how far back that goes. Looks like it goes pretty far back. Or, you know, a few steps at least anyway. Um, once we've selected, I, I really wish this, this was like a toggle. So developer, if you're watching, this would be awesome if once we select and then tap away, we can't just select again. We have to hit hit this, you know, back and forth, back and forth. So if you're trying to do like a lot of notes all at once and, you know, adjust various lengths at, at will, it can be kind of a headache. So it'd be really cool if the selection was just like a toggle when it was off. It could be the navigation, you know. Just my, my little plea, my little feature request there. So uh, we can alternative, you know, once we uh, select some stuff, we can exit out there to delete it. We can copy it which is pretty cool. And then it, it selects it for us so we could like, you know, copy that whole phrase and um, transpose it and get, you know, build it off on another chord or something like that. Uh, we can delete that. Um, we can quantize these to the nearest note length. So I'm not sure if they have to be selected. I'm, I'm guessing they probably would, or, or if it just does it all no matter what. But in any case, uh, you can quantize to the current grid or you can quantize to, uh, you know, much shorter note lengths there if you want to. You can adjust the note, uh, whether you want it to do the both, the start and the end of it, and then just hit quantize, and there it goes. And, um, yeah, so with our little pattern here, we have a few tools as well. Uh, I showed you the loop mode. Uh, we can select all, which is very nice. We can uh, select just the loop which is pretty cool. And then this is kind of cool. So the um, inverse selection, so say we want to like flip these parts around, you could uh, kind of move this down a little bit, get it out of your way. Just remember what note you started on, which is the C, C sharp one. And then um, move this on over, go to your inverse selection, and then move this over, go back, inverse selection, and do that. 
So pretty cool. So if you you can only do it with two parts, I suppose, but you can sort of rearrange like that if you um, you know so desired. Uh, we can crop, which is um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what cropping does. Let's see. There we go. So it looks like if we have a a longer selection, it just trims it up there for us. I'm not sure what rhyme or reason it took to get to the two two four there or whatever. But in any case, um, we have our activate and deactivate the notes there, so we can uh, turn them all off. They kind of white out there for us and activate the notes. So once we have all this data too, we can also uh, go to this little carrot down here and adjust the velocity on each note, which is very, very cool. So So very cool stuff there. Um, we can also, I think just the X resets it all and then uh, this will make it zero, it looks like here. <laughs> you know, like I said, without without the manual, I'm not you know entirely sure what everything does. I've, I have only spent a, a, a little bit of time with this. So in any case, yeah, let's, I like the little uh, velocity sensitive kind of kind of sound there, so we'll. We'll keep that. Let's kind of back out here and uh, get a little drum track real quick. Uh, and you can see this has its own scale, so very cool. Oh, we gotta turn on our loop. I'm just going to leave it just on, on that. You can program drums and, and get crazy however you want. Um, let's add in a little bass uh, to what... So we were using sharps before. Let's just make it really simple. Enable our loop. Select that, let's copy it, move it over a little bit there, and let's uh, select this note, and let's actually transpose this whole thing. So let's grab this, select all, change the loop length so that's very cool this is only the transport only controls the clip you're in so you got to back out and do that there so pretty cool so you can see how you can just sort of start jamming and um, and kind of build it up that way uh, once we have our clips going on you know, we can stop individuals right there. We can start them all again and, and stop all. We can, um, you know, uh, like I said, we could copy these over and paste them in there. Maybe, I, you know, uh, I might not have said that earlier. But in any case, we can copy and paste, which is very, very cool. Uh, some of the tools that we have here, we can rename our clips. Uh, so, you know, if you want to set that bass drums... However you like there, uh, change the clip colors if you want to stay organized that way. Um, as well as the edit clips just takes us to the, uh, the editor window that we were already in. We can um, import MIDI files, which is very cool, as well as export them. So, uh, you know, right, 
Uh, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot um, in terms of exporting to, to like audio share, things like that, but you can mail it to yourself and then um, open it up inside of audio share with the open in or something like that. Airdrop it. You could message it to your, all, all your buddies, show, show off your sweet MIDI clips that you're making. Um, so there are a few options as well as the iTunes there. I haven't hooked this up to iPhone box yet, but I imagine that's probably, probably an option too. Uh, yeah, the, the settings again are, are the same thing that we were we were looking at earlier. The uh, panic button up here is very nice. Our BPM we can swipe to adjust the the whole numbers as well as uh, the finer numbers over here if we if we wanted. Um, we can also do an external clock, so that something else could control this. Tap tempo very nice. I have no idea what these these little dudes do, so if. Uh, Anyone out there knows, please let me know. Uh, we can change our, our time signature over here, which is pretty cool. Um, and like I said, by you know shortening up our loop lengths, you can really adjust your, your clips time signature to whatever you like too. So pretty cool there. And um, yeah, you know, play buttons there. We have, uh, this is activating our clips. So that turns off our drums. This will turn off our bass. Um, we can record. This is like a record mode right there, as well as solo. Uh, again, the carrot is our little uh, our routing there for us. Um, we can mute all. So pretty cool. Um, yeah. So I think I'm kind of kind of covered most everything here. Um, Let's open up a clip real quick and just make sure. Yeah, so we got our velocity settings. We got our our scales that we can do there. You know, it's a two-finger pinch and zoom. Quantize settings, playing from the keyboard, uh, the grid size here. Uh, we can adjust that there. We can also adjust the time signature inside of here. So very, very cool stuff here. Um, a really fun, fun app. I hope to see a bit more development, maybe audio bus support, maybe a manual <laughs> would be pretty cool. But, um, but yeah, like I said, you know, get in there and get your hands dirty and you'll figure out a lot of this on your own. Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions or anything, hit us up at thesoundtestroom.com. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you again real soon. All right, take care.